Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Turning Readers into Writers with me, your host Emma Desi from uh, Bonnie, Scotland. I'm in Edinburgh, our capital city and a beautiful city it is, especially on a day like today. Um, I'm recording this just um, after Easter and we've had a beautiful weekend and honestly I do think if Scotland had more good weather we would never need to go abroad. It's got everything you need, it's got beautiful golden beaches, it's got mountains, it's got meadows, it's got everything you need. You even can get skiing. It's lovely. If only we had the warm sun and the warm air to go with it, that would be perfect. But you know what? Scotland does very well, even though it doesn't have that sunshine. So even though it's not perfect, you know, we could still do with a little bit more of warm air, of sunshine, of an outdoor lifestyle. We don't have it, but we still do very well on less than Scotland's best. (laughs) I'm making a bit of a segue here. So even though Scotland doesn't have all the things that many other countries have, I'll be honest, its food's not the best. You know, it's nothing compared to a good curry or a Thai dish, Um, but it's good enough. We have some lovely, lovely seafood. Um, And we do have fish and chips, which even though it's very unhealthy, I do love it. I do love it. And nobody does a cream bun like Scotland. So it does have that. But it's not, you know, it's not renowned. It's not world famous for its its food. We don't have the brightest of days. When we do have them, they're beautiful, but we don't have a lot of them. What I'm trying to say is that Scotland does very, very well with what it has and it doesn't always have the best of everything, but we still enjoy it. We still appreciate it for all that it's got. You know, the mountains in Scotland are not as high as you will find elsewhere in the world, but they are still beautiful. The snow might not be as fantastic and powdery beautiful as other places, but um, it's still good enough for skiing and having a fun time. Our waters are crystal clear. They're just not very warm, but you can still have a beautiful time in them. And so where I'm going with this is that you too, as a writer, can do the same. You can do less than your best, but still be good enough. And this is something I want to impress upon people because I know that there is a tendency to expect perfection from ourselves. I hear it time and time again from people who sort of say, you know, oh, that's my perfectionist coming out. Um, I can't let it go. I can't send this to you because my perfectionist side won't let it happen. And I really feel for people when they when they have this. I have to admit, it's not something I suffer with. <laughs> Perfectionism is not something that is in my DNA. Um, I do find it easier to do um, to do good enough rather than perfectionist work. So I thought this would be an important kind of discussion or something to talk about for those of you who do feel that pressure to be the perfectionist. If you've ever been to Scotland, you will know how beautiful it is. You'll know that there's many wondrous things about Scotland and its people are very, very friendly. But there's lots that's not right as well. But it's still a good holiday. It's still a good place to live. It's still a good place to visit. Your writing has every possibility of being just that, particularly your first drafts. That it might not be the most perfect thing, but it's probably still good enough. And that more, nine times out of 10, I'd say even 10 times out of 10 is enough. If you went to any published writer, I doubt there is any book that they've said to themselves, yes, this is it, I've nailed it. I have knocked it out of the park with this one. This book is perfect, nobody can ever criticize it. I don't think that happens for anybody, not for, new writers starting out, not even for people like Stephen King, Val McDermott, Lee Childs, JK Rowling, who are the other biggies, Hilary Mantel, for any of those people, they too will also have books where they think, oh, I could have done that better. Oh, if I could go back and do it again, I'd change it this time. For those who are traditionally published as well, those writers may have had to make tweaks um, because their publisher wanted that tweak and perhaps they didn't like that tweak as much, but went along with it nevertheless. Um, So there's always going to be stories that we are not happy with. Now, or not 100% thinking this is the best thing ever. 
but it's good enough. It's good enough for your reader who's going to enjoy the story, who's going to engage with your characters, who is going to want to turn the page and find out what happens next. So I want to kind of bring that right back. So if we're thinking about published novels, there are writers definitely who think that they would like to maybe do things over or know it could be better, or if they were starting again, they would do it slightly differently. But let's pull that right back to our first draft. We are new novelists. We are at the beginning of our careers. We're, we're not at the, the stage that those other big writers are at. So pull it, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, right back to that drafting process where you are drafting that first manuscript or second manuscript. And you're feeling very nervous about um, showing it to somebody. And you're right to be nervous to show it to just anybody. You definitely don't want to do that. You want to show it to people who, in the very first instance, you feel are going to be uh, positive and encouraging, no matter how rough that first draft is. But equally, further along, as you're a few drafts in, you want to be giving it to somebody whose advice you trust and who will acknowledge that it's imperfect, acknowledge that it's an early draft but still kind of be able to offer you constructive feedback ask constructive questions that's going to help you improve it not to feel bad about what you've written already but to improve what you've got um we hear this phrase a lot in the writing world you know you can't edit a blank page so you've got to put down something haven't you you've got to get something down on that page even if it's just exposition even if it's two pages three pages of dialogue with nothing else in between it's something on the page that you can start to mold and start to make better but I want to take you back even further to when you are thinking about making that draft and this can be enough to trip people up. Not the the finished draft, not the kind of, I've got something I can mould on my page now. But actually before that, that fear of not getting it right, that fear of it not being perfect, can be enough to stop somebody doing the rough first draft in the first place. And that's so sad. It's such a shame that people feel so inhibited to and so frightened to actually put those first words down on the page and so I want to encourage you to be to do less than your best to do almost the worst that you can do you know I really really want to encourage you to lower those standards right down because <laughs> if you find you're someone who feels that if there's no point doing it perfectly there's no point doing it at all you are going to trip yourself up again and again and again and you're never going to get what you want out of this you're never going to achieve what it is you desire because as we all know there's no such thing as perfection you can be as happy with something as you can be but is it going to be perfect no and that is okay so pulling it right back to that fear of even sitting down, even trying to um, get those first rough words down on the page. I want you to think about lowering your standards to a point that you might even be embarrassed about. And the reason that you're doing that is you're trying to lower it to the point where you cannot fail, where it becomes just an easy thing for you to do with no pressure attached to it, no high expectations attached to it, no perfection attached to it. And it can always be a little challenge to yourself to make it as bad as you possibly can, just for fun, just so that you can break that cycle and get something typed or written on the page. If you can bear it, I really do recommend um, handwriting your first drafts. They're such a great way, handwriting is such a great way of slowing your brain down. So, because you've got, you can't, your, your hand can't go any faster than your brain. So if you're handwriting, you really have to slow your brain down and get right into the moment of the scene that you're writing. Um, and it's easier to, quickly cross something out with a pen and keep on writing than it is to delete, 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 break that flow and then have to type in again. So if you can bear it, I really encourage you to give first drafting a shot by handwriting. But you're trying to really make it as simple as possible, as easy a win for yourself as you can. And I'm going to make two suggestions for you. 
uh, as to how you can do this. The first one is not one that I use. It's not. It's but I was reading an article recently um, by Tiffany Yates Martin, who has the Fox Editorial blog, which is really good. If you haven't um, checked that out, that is worth checking. Let me make a note of that so I can put that in the um, the show notes for you. But her way of doing it is. Um, she does it with time so she she has a time limit for herself so if she's having a day like i sometimes have then what she will do is she'll say okay um i just need to write for two minutes that's it set the timer two minutes there she goes if that's all she's got that day or at that moment in time that's it she's done her two minutes it's the least she can expect it's it's far less than her best as i'm sure she will uh, quite happily admit but she's made some progress because she spent 2 minutes thinking about her book she spent 2 minutes jotting down some ideas she spent 2 minutes writing down some prose for it now um she writes non-fiction um as well as fiction actually but so if it's you writing your first novel you know that two minutes could be spent doing a bit of a character sketch it could be spent um just roughing out what a scene might be it could be um a conversation between two of your characters it could be a bit of exposition where a character is going through some inner dialogue and just thinking about what has just happened in the scene you can do a surprising amount with two minutes and the wonderful thing about that is it's what is it 120 seconds it's no time at all it goes by very quickly and you can do it in the car you can do it at your desk you can do it while you're waiting um at the doctors or waiting for an appointment you can do that anywhere two minutes that's all it takes and you can do it on your phone or you can do it in a notepad if you've got that with you super super easy and the joy is you've made some progress. So it's not sitting down, having to do this long, very involved, deep writing session. It's, I'm clicking my fingers there. It's really quick. Snap, 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 done. Two minutes done. You have made some progress in your your novel. It's not taken a lot out of your day. It's not made you have to think about being per, per, uh, perfect in any way, shape or form. You've just got some rough drafts down uh, some rough words down that contribute towards your draft and get you on that path it's such a great way of breaking that um that cycle of inactivity that cycle of fear so that's the way that tiffany does it and that will work for some of you for sure now my way is a bit different so i i do it in terms of word count i don't know why i've always preferred word count than a time a sort of period of time to be working so if i think about my own experience my own process of first drafting particularly um <laughs> things have changed slightly now because my kids are older and they walk themselves to school now but previously i would walk the kids to school drop them off and then I'd go to a local cafe and I would um, sit at the back of the cafe and ensconce myself there for a couple of hours and write somewhere between 1500 and 2500 words that was my daily um, aim and I would say eight nine times out of ten that would work Monday to Friday I would get myself together get myself to the cafe big cup of coffee that would last me for the morning and um, pen and paper because I write a first draft pen and paper that's all I need and boof it's gone you know I can get there and I get into it I enjoy the cafe atmosphere because it means that I'm with other humans I'm not all alone I'm with other people but I'm not engaged with them in any way they're strangers to me I don't know them so they are kind of milling around I feel that I'm getting that human contact but they're not having a conversation with me they're not interrupting me I don't feel obliged to talk to them in any way so it's perfect for me um and nine times out of ten that will work and over the course of a number of weeks I will get a very rough first draft down 
I'm a pantser, so I just hitch a ride with my characters and see where they go. Sometimes they take me straight through and it's brilliant, I have no problems. Other times there's a lot of detours and I have to backtrack and uh, there's a lot of work to do on the back end, but it's worth it for the fun of being a discovery writer. But there are those days where things just do not do not go to plan and even though I've had a good night's sleep and I get up as usual get the kids to school get my cup of coffee get my favorite table in the cafe when I sit down and I open my pad and get my pen out oh just this kind of you know slump comes over me I get what what I refer to as this wall of resistance that comes up And it's sort of, it's almost like it sort of levels itself up through the floor and through my body. And it says, you're not doing this today. It's not happening. There's no excitement. There's no energy around the writing. There's no um, inspiration for the story. None of the characters are speaking to me that day. And it's quite depressing. It's like, oh gosh, come on. I've got myself all geared up. I'm ready. I'm here. Why is it not happening? So in that time, when I have those days... Um, instead of using the timer like Tiffany I use the word count and my minimum my less than best my doing the doing the least possible but still making progress is to say to myself okay you just have to write 50 words that's it that is my goal for the day is to write 50 words and um, it's just reverse psychology it's tricking myself into thinking this is so simple so easy it's going to take less than a minute I can do that and then then I can head on over to social media if I want and or just down my coffee and go home whatever it is but what I've found for myself is that 50 words I can't stop at 50 words can you stop at 50 words (laughs) I can't stop at 50 words so what I find is is that I start it I do those 50 words but that is just kind of my inroad and it gets me into the scene it gets me back into what it is that I'm trying to write that day and then undoubtedly I will then go on and write at very least 500 words maybe a thousand words Maybe I break that barrier, manage to lower that wall of resistance um, enough that I can just get back into the scene and get the flow going. And I might even have a great day and write my 2,500 words. That can, That is usually what happens when I'm having those bad days. I say to myself, okay, Emma, you just need to write 50 words and then you're good to go. Uh, I'd say 90% of the time that works. I have to write more than 50 words and I usually get a scene written or half a scene written certainly and it's all good. There are those other days however, there is that 10% where um, it still just doesn't happen. I write those 50 words and then I'm kind of into it and I think oh can I do any more and I might get up to 100 words but there are those days where that's it. 50 words is all I've got that day and it's annoying and it's I don't want to say depressing, but it does make me feel a bit down that I haven't managed to do more because, um, you know, I pride myself on my productivity and getting things done. So I feel I've let myself down if I can't do more than the 50 words. But at the same time, I'm totally acknowledging that I've written 50 words. <laughs> and tiny as that is, I have made progress with my book. It's only 50 words. It took me less than a minute. But it's done. I have made some progress with my novel, with my first draft. And that bit of it feels really good. That bit of it is enough to keep me coming back the next day and just putting putting that bad session behind me, coming back the next day fresh. And invariably, I do come back fresh. Invariably, I do get back to my usual self the next day. So t- I really want to impress upon you that by removing that um that need to get the very first words perfect particularly as these are words that nobody else might see you know they really are just for you there's there's nobody you're trying to impress it's just you and you know you you know that perhaps you do start with um some bad words but they get better or perhaps you know that you you actually don't write 
bad as bad words as you think that you do and when you come back and reread it the next day or in a couple of days time you realize it wasn't as bad as you first thought it was but anyway i just wanted to impress upon you the importance of reducing that feeling of being a perfectionist of it having to be 10 stars right from the get-go straight out the gate but in actual fact you just need to get something on paper if you because you can't edit that blank page and by really kind of going for the lowest going for that low-hanging fruit for that lowest denominator for what is what you would normally consider in your professional work to be substandard is enough for your first draft it is enough just to get you to break that cycle of inactivity to break that cycle of of blockage of you know feeling blocked by it um worth giving a try i genuinely think this is so so worth trying so either doing the um doing the time doing the timer so you know using the two minutes and saying okay two minutes go when the alarm goes that's it you're done for the day or your 50 words getting your 50 words down and accepting hey not my best day but I have made progress and that is what counts because that's what it takes to write a novel isn't it it takes that level of continuity it takes that level of being determined and accepting that they're just like in your character's story there's good days and there's bad days you know you've got to take two steps forward you're undoubtedly going to have one step back but that is your own story arc the story arc of writing this novel your very own one and um it's got to be acknowledged it's got to be gone through it's got to be learnt from and understood and when you realise that this is a natural part of the writing process, you'll stop, hopefully anyway, stop beating yourself up about it and know that that's just the way it goes. This is part of the process. There are good days and there are bad days, but you've got to um, you've got to show up for yourself. You've got to come in and do that work and help yourself get to the finish line. Because I promise you, I promise you it's so worth it when you do and it's almost like the harder it is to get to the finish line, the more worth it it is because you've really had to work for it. You've had to strive for it. You've had to dig deep and find bits about yourself that you didn't know you had. And um, and that in itself can make it so, so worth it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so two minutes or 50 words, which one works for you? Do let me know um, in the comments below or you can always email me emma at emmadesi.com and let me know which is best for you. So I hope you found this useful. And I have a favour to ask today. I've got a really big favour to ask. If you're enjoying the website, the website, if you're enjoying the podcast, if you're finding the the stories that I share or the tips that I share, the recollections that I share, whatever it is in the, the podcast, if you find them useful, if they give you the pep talk that you need at times or they give you a new strategy to try at times and actually you find it useful and encouraging, then please would you um, go to wherever it is that you get your podcast from and I'd be ever so grateful if you would um, rate it and if you have a few minutes to spare to say a few kind words in the review section because um, I do do this for for new writers. I really want new writers to get their first novel written. It's part of my big mission is to help a thousand writers write their first novel and if they can find my podcast and they can find what I have to offer and it's of help to them really helps me help them. So if you have time to do that I'd be ever ever so grateful. All right, that is me for today. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye.